Okay, well, um, Hannah Suter, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today on the Lyle podcast. You are my first ever guest, and I can't begin to tell you how nervous I am um, mm -hmm. and uh, honored and excited to have you here. Um, I'm just excited to see where this next little bit takes us. You're somebody that I really honor and respect. And whenever I get the opportunity to have, I mean, just anytime I get to hang out with you is great. So uh, two people that don't know Hannah and know myself, uh, she and I are quite good friends and uh, have conversations like this all the time. And we just happen to be doing it um, in a in more public context to open you into that. And she is being gracious enough to be a guinea pig as <laughs> I launch into this thing that's been a little bit of a, a dream of mine for a while. But as dreams go, you don't really know how real they are until they kind of persist. So I've had this thought to do this podcast for a while. And um, as you know, from if you've listened to some of my intros uh, to the podcast. But Hannah, it's so great to have you here. I've kind of sent over some of what will be uh, what I think kind of our prototype questions, things that I really um, want to hear from people and uh, that will kind of guide our conversation, but we're going to take it however we, uh, however we go. The first thing that um, I'd like to know from you and I, it makes me, it's probably the thing I'm most nervous about of the podcast is to give somebody a label that they don't want. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I've chosen is to probably try to minimize that and have mm -hmm. uh, my guests describe themselves. So my, my first question for you, Hannah, is uh, how would you describe your work and vocation? And just introduce yourself to uh, the one person that happens to listen to us. <laughs> no, no, no to, to whoever might happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try to be the right humble and learning that. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. how would you describe your, your work in your yeah. education? Because I could say just simply uh, that you're a female pastor up in Portland, Oregon, and we met uh, while I lived there a few years ago. But third time asking the question. This isn't very good uh, hosting so far. So how would you describe your work and vocation? Yeah, I mean, those adjectives are ac all accurate. I am a female and a pastor up in Portland. And yeah, I'll, although I appreciate, yeah, the opportunity to get to like, kind of think about how I would describe my work, because for whatever reason, the word pastor has never felt like perfectly or I've never felt perfectly at home in it. And I don't know if that's a normal thing or maybe that's, um, what's it called? Uh, imposter syndrome. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But a word that resonates and has more consistently resonated with me is um, like a guide and a teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I get to do those things in a faith community um, and learn a lot along the way about how people grow and what matters to people um and then what it, what it can look like for me to companion them um, so that takes place in a working context at a church and um, but I think that also is something that takes place in other areas of my life and that's maybe gets to the vocation part of that question where I, for the last maybe seven or eight years, uh, one of the classes I took in my grad program was uh, on spiritual leadership. And we basically were given the opportunity to come up with a, a mission statement of sorts where we spent the semester exploring that. And the fruit of that semester has really continued to resonate with me and in uh, the mission that kind of emerged during that time was to walk with God and to seek truth while sharing that journey with others through teaching, through friendship and through spiritual care. So that's how I would describe <laughs> my work and vocation is I've got a little Good. tidy mission statement, but yeah, I particularly love that friendship is in there too. Cause I think that's a big place where I kind of feel most connected to who I 
feel called to be or yeah that sense of vocation um, in working environments but also in community so yeah that's incredible and I do love how you have that so wrapped up and not that it's limiting you or not that it's can't change or evolve um, or it's stagnant but that you've done that time to be able to so concisely say like what you feel uh, you're here for and Mm -hmm. that's um, one of the just one of the reasons why you know you're such a a great guest to have on first. And I'm so honored to have this conversation with you um, because what I want to talk about uh, what this podcast is about is right. How do we live our, our healthiest life? So, so Lyle, how do you live your healthiest life? And um, I'd love to explore that with you in the context of, you know, so we have a bit of history, you know, so it's, it's fine if we go into uh, like friendship space, you know, you can stay mm-hmm. in your kind of your guide mm-hmm. kind of uh um, I'm trying to remember what else you said. I'm very visual. Um, and we can talk about, you know, even explore like, you know, different because labels and I loved how, <laughs> I loved how uh, it just definitely affirmed that I'm going to let people describe what they do and what they're called too much more. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I think we, those, I think yeah. those identities can be, can be helpful too, you know, particularly, I think it is unique that I'm a female pastor, you know, and then that's something I get to do. Um, And then also sometimes that can be right unhelpful in the sense that like, I can, I can kind of get into that proving space of like, Oh, I need to like prove um, that I'm like worth being here because I'm using that word female to make me like distinct in my field or something. Um, So Hmm. they, they, they carry, that's something that I'm like really proud of and also something that, can create like a unhelpful energy in me. So Mm, both and. Yeah, to both and. We talked about that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like not not either or, but both and. And I that reminds me just a lot of conversations that we've had where I do try to encourage you in your role Mm -hmm. as a female in a pastoral position. Um, And you're also, you know, a lot of times pastors, female pastors are relegated to uh, working with children or working with Mm -hmm. other women. Um, And it's been really exciting, uh, you know, to see you step up into teaching role and Mm -hmm. teaching the entire congregation and to Mm -hmm. see the growth that uh, you've had within that. Because to me, I think, you know, you were, you were very humble about how you said it, like how you can try to prove yourself, but I think there can be that proving coming from maybe uh, some other persons or, or either like staff or, um, or maybe even the congregation themselves uh, who aren't accustomed to having a female pastor and might question your authority. I don't know if that resonates at all with you that's I'm certainly speaking from my perspective and not I'm not trying to state what your experience is um yeah definitely I would say most so just other people in like the in church work so even less particular to my community I would say my community has been consistently proved me wrong in how supportive and encouraging they've been um men and women all, all ages um Although it is my favorite when like a 65 year old white man comes and, you know, says that something I said really meant a lot to him, you know, it's like, (laughs) good, I've got the ear, I've got your ear, you know? Um, Yeah. Yeah. But, but other people maybe at, in other church spaces or um, in churches where that's not as normal or not allowed, or, you know, there's kind of that suspicion, but yeah, and, and I think that's where having that mission statement has been really, really orienting. And I remember a conversation even that you and I had when I was really wrestling with starting to teach um, broadly to the congregation of, it took me many years to decide that I wanted to do that because um, it was scary and hard and I didn't know if I could and there was a voice in my head saying I was doing something bad and, and I could go back to that mission statement as an anchor of, 
oh no, like this is part of my, this is part of my vocation to say yes to opportunities to share my journey with God through teaching friendship and spiritual care. Like, oh, okay, there it is. Yeah. Okay. That gives me some courage. Teaching is in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gives me some courage to lean into that. So yeah, particularly when you're given the opportunity, right? Because that mm-hmm. was a little bit of, um, uh, because, yeah, there was a growing into those opportunities um, versus like, you weren't like, oh, I'm a female pastor, get me up there and, you know, mm-hmm. give me the microphone. Like that wasn't your, you weren't, you know, you weren't battling that. It was, uh, you know, um, and I, I think I even project a, a, as well from, um, and I'm glad you brought up because I didn't mean to uh, point towards like there being an issue uh, with your particular faith community, but I think it comes out of, which was my uh, faith community as well while I was in, while I was in Portland and still so many people that I love and care about and mm-hmm. I know that I could, uh, you know, fly or drive or however I get up into Portland, I know I could at a moment's notice, have at least a dozen people to stay with. Um, and, and that's a beautiful thing about community, but going back to uh, the, I've definitely been shaped by my Christian upbringing, my evangelical Christian upbringing that um, taught me a bit to kind of stay in my place and kind of be small and that maybe women had a more limited role. And I, I definitely feel like I'm learning how to come out of that and not mm. like, like, I think like you're pointing towards to not have it be an ego thing. Um, but, uh, but stepping into the fullness of my identity and whatever my, uh, skills and gifting is, which, you know, this is, we can talk about this however we want to, this, mm-hmm. this, pod, this is like right in the wheelhouse of uh, this podcast mm-hmm. of like, what, like living our best self. And for me, there's been like an unlearning Mm-hmm. an unlearning of certain things that I didn't even know that I, uh, I didn't, I didn't even know that I believed. And uh, part of what I, how I have processed that recently is like in the, in the book that I'm working on that you're aware of and are very kindly uh, helping me uh, and reading it and editing it um, and giving your, me your two cents. Um. But yeah, that definitely is, I think, something that we're very th- like thick in. I don't know, maybe we could play around. We kind of like define words and process together of like, I mean, maybe you have, maybe you have more words of like where you think, um, I think we could talk about it from the church or I think we could mm-hmm. talk just from humanity in general. I think we're in the midst of uh, some evolution, some upheaval, some Um, turmoil things that were kind of aren't and then there's like some resistance to it am I being clear where I'm going to Uh, tell me more tell me yeah so I so I think that and I'm speaking in terms of being a being a woman Mm -hmm. and the the woman's role in -hmm. the world um and and in the church Yeah. yeah yeah No, not, I mean, nothing's changing. Nothing's different. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, the world, I think, was a couple decades ahead of ev- the evangelical church, for sure, in that um, upheaval. But yeah, I mean, it's it's like when you're, the image that's coming to mind is, you know, I like to garden and play around outside in the dirt, but it's like when you're trying to pull a weed or something and you just realize oh how deep the root system goes Mm -hmm. you know and like at the last house I moved into there was this tree that had just sent out roots like all underneath like our little concrete patio and we had a little strip of dirt that I was hoping to plant and it's just root infested and it's like oh I was hoping to pull out a few little like clear up Till, till up the soil a little bit, spend 15 minutes out there and it was like a two hour project, you know, and, and like barely got all of it. So that's, what's coming to mind for me is like, I, yeah, I, I still am so impacted by, it's easy just to say the patriarchy, you know, but, but yeah, the way that the world has been and the way that power has been ordered. And yeah, I think there's been 
a lot of growth in that one area of, of, you know, using my voice. I still have a little card from you that you sent me on my, um, standing desk that says, uh, just a note to say that you have a, a voice worth hearing. And that's still like, is something that I choose to remember when I am in places where I get to use that voice and I'm given the opportunity to use that voice. Um, so there's been a lot of growth in, in those areas, but then that just continues to, as, you, as I keep digging, that just continues to spur on the journey of all these other spaces. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. I just love talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, and I, so I want to, one of the things that I'm trying to do, Hana, because uh, you've heard, uh, you know, a bit about why I am doing this, um, what's my vision or the prompting or the calling, all the different words. But I don't know if I've said this. One of the things that I want to do is I want to be a better listener. Mm. And I'm somebody that is a thinker and mm. is really coming into my own as like embracing that and that that's something I get to contribute to the world. And mm -hmm. this podcast is, is part of that. Um, and my writing is part of that. That's this, It's all kind of new and a, a different expression of me versus, you know, my work and vocation that for my work that has been primarily as a physical therapist and then, you know, um, for a decade and a half and then uh, teaching for about a decade, um, but all within healthcare and healing. And um, so I, so I have my lane, I have my, and I, but I'm also seeing that I've been limited, right? So mm -hmm. and that, that's where this podcast and uh, I want to explore the thoughts more and not just be like, well, why do I get these random thoughts sometimes that seem kind of good, but have no place uh, to do with them, to, to share them. So it's this interesting, well, it's both. And I guess, or if we come back to that, where I, I feel like there's this growth opportunity for me and um, I'm trying to do it in front of people to encourage other people to do uh, their thing. So there's that, that both. So there's like a bravery of action, but there's this, and of, you know, the other side of the coin where I think I've, I think sometimes I talk too much once I get kind of excited or passionate about whatever, and I don't ask enough questions. And so, um, I'm going to be trying to do that. And, <laughs> I, and I want to even, I hope we can, because I think you, you know, are a very thoughtful person. I think you um, are so relational. I think you have a lot of uh, wisdom and skills and gifting in that. And I would love to just uh, see what's in there to mine that maybe I don't even know, or maybe, you know, I came up and uh, visited a few weeks ago, which was uh, wonderful, but maybe there's even new stuff, right? As we, uh, that's certainly something that I think part of living your healthiest life is, is that you're not stagnant. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I literally don't believe you can be stagnant, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think it's either kind of regression or progression and there's seasons to push hard and seasons to rest and we'll get, we'll see where our conversations mm -hmm. go. And I don't want to say mm -hmm. all my, my kind of thoughts about things, but I would, I'd love for, let's just go there and just talk about, um, so one of the things I want to hear from is my guest is, I have my thoughts. I've thought about a lot. I spend my life like dedicated to helping people live their healthiest life. And now I want to expand that. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to do that in my clinical practice, but can you tell, can you tell us from your perspective and, uh, what do you think it means to live your healthiest life? Yeah, that's, this is where I get nervous. Cause you're right. You've spent so long, you know, thinking about this and and just, it continues to, like, you're talking about dreams earlier that when those dreams continue to have momentum over a long period of time. And so it's like, oh, I haven't <laughs> thought about it as much as you, but you know, of, of course, like I'm, I've been living it, trying to live it out, but just haven't, you know, thought of about course. it in that framework. That's it. But That's it. Yeah. Okay. Question was, 
what are what my do you think what, what do you think it means to live your healthiest life Hannah yeah. Suter of Portland That's Oregon what, what do you means. what do you think it means to live your healthiest life and this can be an evolution and explaining like we're mm-hmm. just going to take this wherever it takes us because I do think because this isn't about like right answers it's not about mm-hmm. right wrong I think we all have perspectives and we all have like a bit of wisdom and mm-hmm. So yeah, just what, what occurs to you when you think of that? It's not about being right. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, What? Yeah. I mean, I think connected to that even is, and what you were sharing earlier about listening, I, I think about like listening and paying attention. I'm stealing from a Mary Oliver quote where she talks about the, Mm -hmm. the beginning of devotion is attention and Hmm. I'm thinking of, you know, what has been something that consistently is a part of like where healthy choices begin or like where a, a, a healthy path or paradigm begins. And I think for me, it's a lot of it has been learning to like, listen to my body, learning to listen to wisdom, uh, learning to listen to, can I, I pa- can I pause you? Just mm-hmm. what do you mean by wisdom? Mm. Like, cause body, um, I didn't want to lose that. I don't want to cut off your flow, but I also, wanna... yeah. Well, see, wisdom is just a nice catch all. Oh, and now I have to explain oh, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. love, cause yeah. you do such a good job. You are, you'll, we'll pause. And that's something I yeah. respect in you that you don't just say things, you know, just because, mm-hmm. oh, there's a silence or you'll, you'll pause. And, um, so maybe I shouldn't, have, maybe I shouldn't have cut you off. No, no, that's good. Yeah. I think, so when I think of wisdom, I think of like my own knowing, which is like learning to like pay attention to that, which isn't, doesn't necessarily live in like my reactions to things or my first thoughts about things or, but it is maybe like intuition is a part of it or um, Mm. like my spirit is probably a part of that. But then putting that in dialogue with circumstances, putting it in dialogue with my faith tradition and wisdom that has kind of stood the test of time within that. Um, wisdom of my community. Yeah, I think in college, I remember studying this um, uh, Catholic educator uh, and we, each of us in the class were assigned a different, yeah, a different educator to like, educator to look at their different like pedagogy and draw from it. And so I picked this guy who developed a pedagogy called shared praxis and um, mm he, one of the movements in his kind of flow of learning and educating was putting our story and God's story in dialogue. And um, just the idea Mm -hmm. of like wisdom isn't necessarily outside me, but it's Mm -hmm. something that gets found when I put my story in dialogue with with other good and true and beautiful sources, whether that be Mm -hmm. my -hmm. faith or people Mm -hmm. I care about and trust and love or, um, or science or, you know, wisdom that's found through scientific methods or, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's something about that, like permission to put those things in dialogue that I, that has been like really profound for me over the last, I don't know, decade or so. And I've never really connected that to wisdom before, but in this moment I am and see yeah, that's what I, like that whenever you do that because it's like uh mm-hmm. I, I love being like exploring the edge with you like the mm-hmm. edge of uh the edge of growth the edge of learning and like where it's where it's fresh and it's still maybe not in our consciousness yet it's maybe we don't have words for it but maybe we're starting to live things or we have like mm-hmm, these fleeting mm-hmm. thoughts um mm-hmm. 
because it cause, yeah because there's little and then little we make like our little new it's neuroplasticity it's like we're uh taking our our experiences the external world and the internal world and making like some connections uh which i've never actually thought of uh wisdom that way so there you go so a little back and forth of yeah that that wis um that wisdom can be neuroplasticity that it can be this scientific thing that we can actually study the, the neuroplasticity meaning that the is neuro meaning kind of brain like our neural structures and plastic meaning they can change so that we can that they're always changing it it's basically that you can teach an old dog mm-hmm. new trick like mm-hmm. that that's not that's an untruth like that we can always always learn so which is just the science of we're always either <laughs> um, you know progressing or regressing mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, I love, it. I love being like, with you when you make new connections. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I'm like looking up to my, like the, the yes, left you are. corner yes, of you my are. eye, you know, there's yes. like, there's something there. I'm it's trying true. To pull it's out. true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe that would just connect that all back to like what I think it means to live your healthiest life. I think like discernment is a huge part of it and like mm. creating room to put mm. Like my experience in dialogue with mm. something that's bigger than me too, to help me grow beyond myself. But, and what I mean, what I mean by that is like, help me grow beyond mm. like the limitations that are surrounding me or whatever, um, whether those are inherited or inside or outside limitations, but yeah, mm-hmm. paying attention and discerning and, and just like a lot of freedom in that um, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's, when I think of you know, your, your healthiest life or like the infomercials that are like (laughs) your best life now or something like that. Like it looks, I often will think that that, that looks like this, you know, yeah, yeah, the healthiest life is like outside me. And it's like, it's existing just a couple more pounds away, or it's existing (laughs) a career change away or where, yeah, it's, I think it's so much more about like a holistic discernment mm-hmm. process. Right. Yeah. There's so many things like, or that, or we're the right vacations or the right mm-hmm, relationships mm-hmm, or the, mm-hmm. um, um, I'm trying to remember you said, you just said something about, um, mm, dang it. This, this is my challenge of not interrupting is that to like hold, you know, to like mm-hmm. still follow along and then and like to ask those uh, follow-up questions. Um, mm-hmm. You're talking about connecting t- to, a bo- what did you say to connect to a, I'm going to have to let it go. I think, cause it's going to be awkward on a podcast. Like listening to my body. Uh, no, mm-hmm. it was, um, you used a phrase and you might not be aware of it, like outside of the context, because sure. I, I was wondering if you're, you're talking, not like connecting to a greater knowledge or connecting to a, a greater cause. You said something, a greater, um, mm. might not even been greater, bigger, um, mm. like purpose. something that's beyond said, myself. Yeah. Yeah. You said something yeah. like in that vein. So I'm sorry. I don't have the mm. exact words. Maybe yeah. I need to learn to jot down notes like while I'm <laughs> uh, listening. Yeah, so I have that good. phrase to come back to, but, um, I'm curious about if that makes sense, my vague recollection of what you said, like to explore that a little bit more of like, what do you feel like you're, I think you're, I think you're talking about connecting to something bigger than yourself. Like what, mm-hmm. what does that mean to you? Like, cause that's, yeah. it sounds like you think that's really vital to, mm-hmm. to living this, this healthier life. Yeah. So I'll start with me, what that means to me, but also I, yeah, I realize it's going to look particular to me. So, but I do think. Yeah. And that's that what we want. Yeah. I mean, bring for us, me, it's, mm-hmm. yeah. Connecting to God for sure. And, um, God as a being beyond myself, um, where, yeah, this, like this dance of this, like deep affirmation of like, what's in me. And, and you've been a friend that's really helped, um, model that and challenge that, um, in me and then also that like putting it in dialogue with like I don't know everything like and I also am like 
part of the gift of being human is that I'm human and I have, and I have limits and, um, and there's like so much diversity in the human experience that, um, I think that growth is a part of our healthiest lives. And so like growing into a fuller version of me means bringing things that aren't me into my sphere and, and learning from that and through that and growing and expanding. And so, um, yeah, for me, the putting my life in dialogue with something beyond myself is, is God. And then the ways that God shows up in my life through creation, through, well, like the natural world creation, but then also like through other human beings and, um, in the Christian tradition, you know, we, I, the Christian tradition believes that, that God also is revealed through the, the body of Christ, which is the other people who are followers of Jesus. And so, um, yeah, God through humanity and, um, yeah, that's what I mean by that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So the, so that inner, inner, um, I'm trying to say intersection or interaction. I am not sure that. So the inner, I think interaction uh, between, uh, you know, so God or this greater self, uh, I, I believe you, you said that that impacts like how you live your day-to-day -day life and like how you mm -hmm. experience um, your present circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, you and I talk about what's the next best thing. It, and, and that just that for me, that's like discernment, right? That's um, not just big discernment around like, oh, what's my mission or things like that, which are helpful to have those macro discerning spaces. But that's a big part of my just daily moment to moment discernment is like, okay, put my spirit in dialogue with God, with my community, with my values um, and that's gonna kind of orient me and kind of my next mm -hmm. best step, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, like what I sense to kind of get back from God in those conversations, is like, what do you think? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. not all the time, but, but it, at least particularly in the last few years, that's kind of a big sense mm -hmm. I got of just that, again, that affirmation of cultivating my own voice and perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that something that you felt prepared for it? Like in your, uh, uh, in your, in your Christian upbringing, did you feel like that interacting with God of him, uh, him, we'll say mm -hmm. you got him saying, um, yeah, what do you, what do you want to do, mm -hmm. Hannah? Mm -hmm. Like to the situation is that, uh, I think you mentioned kind of like a, t a temporal thing that it's been kind of recently. Mm -hmm. Is there any, um, I don't know if there's anything, if that's been a newer thing or if there's anything you want to share about uh, that experience? Yeah. I think probably where, I mean, there, yeah, there was, there was always an emphasis growing up on like cultivating your personal relationship with God. So, so that was a part of things, but the behaviors in which you did that were a bit more fixed um, and linear, um, like reading your Bible or praying being like one directional, like, like I'm talking to God versus like a conversation. Um, yeah. So it was kind of like a half the pie situation. I think Sean and Equist mm -hmm. uses that imagery of like, I got I got a part of the pie. Um, and then I think it was in college. I went to a Quaker university and, um, and had my first exposure to a female pastor there. And, and, and she was kind of the first spiritual leader to model to me more of like a, a, a listening, interactive, uh, very like I was going to say self-affirming that that sounds not how I want it to sound, but like affirming of the, like the inner experience, um, with God and, um, yeah, just kind of 
a couple more pieces of the pie were added to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it continues to get more and more fuller. Um, Mm -hmm. that's how I would describe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. And I think even actually, and I don't know how far we can or should go into this, uh, but uh, like, I think even my time, uh, those few years that I was in Portland, meeting people like you and it's like female pastor. And again, it's not that I'd never seen a female pastor, but they were always, you know, with children or like women. And, um, Mm -hmm. and that was the interpretation of the Bible that I was presented with and my, my family of origin. And so uh, seeing that, you know, there are other female pastors in the church as well. And then almost kind of wrestling alongside you with that, you know, and then just like realizing the dis, um, dissonance in myself, like in some of the things I believe versus how I actually acted, you know, or like, uh, and, and we, yeah, I don't know how far to, far to get into it, but even other leadership, like lay leadership, like a, that was approached, you know, to be like in a training for like potential like leadership as a lay person within the church that historically in my experience have been like males doing it. And then, but when I look at males, I don't think of them as better than myself. I've never thought of males as better than myself, but then I I'm starting like to identify and I could identify it in other people, like in gender norms and things like that, that maybe naturally bumped up against who I was because I'm a pretty like athletic person and I like to learn things even if it's mechanical stuff you know like I want to do what I want to do right and Mm -hmm. so some of my interests um led me more to that but I was confronted uh with with those discrepancies and so Mm -hmm. it's been um fun to grow myself and uh and kind of and challenge fun and challenging mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, to identify those things and then to consider how that might be limiting me mm-hmm. and uh, so take risky. those steps. It does feel really risky because um, there's kind of like a participation then in that, right? And then there's mm-hmm. like a safety in that. There's a kind of a safety in rule following and formulas oh, for sure. mm-hmm. and. So at some point, as you start to grow, you start to realize the fences and Mm -hmm. that they're, they're just like lines drawn in the ground. They're not actual fences. They're not actually boundaries. It's just, Mm -hmm. and they're, they're just something that somebody has told you Mm -hmm. that like in their mind, for whatever their reasons are, they've passed on as truth, whether they even believe them to be true or not. And I, Mm -hmm. that's a whole different Mm -hmm. Uh, can of worms Mm -hmm. to get into um yeah and I I would love to hear even more so we kind of went in like spiritual domain and I love that I love Mm -hmm. um you know part of I I think health and well-being is really integration of so many different uh, components as I've mentioned before in the evolution uh, in my own life and then just how that manifests in my work uh, you mentioned uh, body, for example, is, mm-hmm. I don't know if uh, there's anything you're willing to share there about like what you think. Um, so we, I, I can imagine things that you mean by when you say uh, listening to your body, um, mm-hmm. but is there anything that you'd care to expound on it with that? Yeah, I'll share like a little bit of my story with that. Um, you know, it's just to make this like a three hour podcast. I'm sure your listener will really appreciate that. Yeah. I got to figure out where the one listener is. Yeah. Like, uh, some, some further details, but yeah. Um, yeah. I think my like journey, even like with health, like my like embodied health um, really grew out of like a very insecure place um, in college, started to have like a lot of body image issues and lot of insecurity around the way I was embodied in the world and whether or not that was going to make me like lovable and accepted and compelling, you know, those types of things. So I, I played volleyball, um, all growing up and, you, you know, was healthy in those senses of like, yeah, I was an active kid, um, but didn't really th- think much about it in like a health perspective um like you know I 
Taco Bell after every <laughs> volleyball game kind of a thing. Um, but then in, yeah, in college, really started to, to wrestle with that and then got really um, invested in like the health industry and like and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier it's like oh these external like visions and voices around like what health looks like and what your healthiest life looks like and um yeah got on that path for a while and at the same time like knew that knew that that wasn't gonna get me where I wanted to be but I just kept putting a lot of energy into finding new ways to work out um reading about what kind of foods are really healthy for your body and um which is all great but my motivation was like it was fueled by like shame and insecurity so um it took yeah I mean (laughs) it took as if it's like over right (laughs) but (laughs) I would say like big shifts toward a, a more like kind relationship with my body um took place over the course of like three or four years of um really trying to like what if I took those fences away like you were talking about what if the lines the fences that are there are just like human made slash probably (laughs) man-made like uh (laughs) yeah like male male made male made yeah Mm -hmm. um like what if I didn't need to look like that? What if I could just trust that my body could actually tell me what it wants and that I don't have to like, like treating my body as though it's like this, like, like super unruly child or something that needs like constant <laughs> discipline or co- like, what if I just like let it go a little bit mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and like moved when I wanted to move and Mm -hmm. moved in ways that felt good. And, Mm -hmm. and yeah, so it was kind of like a big pendulum swings back and forth, back and Mm -hmm. forth. And I feel like those are less whiplashy now Mm -hmm. um, for sure. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I think listening to my whole self is a big part of living my healthiest life. Um, Mm-hmm. like right now you and I have talked about like I think with the pandemic like I think my body and nervous system has gone through so much mm-hmm. and just like pushing it really hard physically just nothing in mm-hmm. me wants to do that right now mm-hmm. but can I trust that as I say yes to the things that do feel like joyful movement right now and whole and good that my body will like communicate to me when it's ready for something different um or not but mm-hmm. what if like my identity and worth and like desirability and lovability like isn't actually attached to that um what if I'm a kinder more gentle present person without being preoccupied with kind of those shame-fueled messages um mm-hmm. to get my body mm-hmm. into it to perform a certain way versus like Yeah. Like letting it, Mm -hmm. letting it have its own wisdom. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I also, um, I think you're aware when I was in, well, for sure, like teens into Mm twenties, but um, struggled with, uh, with eating and like restriction and, you know, thinking about calories Mm -hmm. and, um, definitely like they yeah, have that body, body image. And it seems just like ubiquitous. It's hard for me to think of like a woman <laughs> in mm-hmm. the United States. And I know it goes outside of our borders, but in the United States that doesn't feel shame about their body, um, mm-hmm. and feel like there's some mark that they're trying to measure up to. And because of that, then have dysfunction that lead, uh, that, makes it more difficult for us to live our healthiest life Mm -hmm. and uh, there's the work of yeah those roots that you're talking about just the Mm -hmm. other night you know so I have my own gardening uh, Mm -hmm. uh, analogy so I have mint right and mint is always one of those things Mm -hmm. that 
like keep it in a pot because <laughs> the roots it'll go everywhere and you'll never get rid of it and I love like spearmint and so I have two things like I have a big thing on one side of the house and then a small one and the small one was just really struggling and and I'd known it was there was a bunch going on in there and I just started like hacking into it two nights ago just chopping and then it was completely root bound like all around wrapped around wrapped mm-hmm. around and so it couldn't grow because, you know, because of this and it was bringing uh, death even uh, to itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. so I had it contained, but yeah, it makes me think so. So as we root out, you know, so coming back to like thinking about, we're talking specifically about like body image and um, the female body and yeah, going through that process of what are the things that I uh, believe what are things that I think and and how do I behave and where are their disconnects from mm-hmm. what what's going on in my head versus what I would say to somebody else that I believe or write down mm-hmm. and say that I believe versus what my actions actually do mm-hmm. and maybe we can spend a little bit of time in there um, because I think that I think that's going down the road of discernment a little bit and just kind of exploring maybe what discernment is um, because we get all these different messages. Plus we have our own internal thoughts, which I'm finding a lot of my internal thoughts are, I'm not even aware of, um, Mm. but are can be really tied to emotional states that maybe prompt me to act in a certain way, you know, uh, whatever the emotion is. So I'm keeping it, keeping it kind of vague there, but um, yeah, like what, what about, I'm trying to bring it into a question so that hopefully I'm like landing it um, or I can try to pass off the baton there if you've got something to say, but if you need me to, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll try to think of a specific question if that, yeah, that wasn't keep going. clear. Yeah. Yeah. So what, um, what do you think the role is of discernment with like this battle with our inner thoughts versus actions versus what our stated beliefs are? Mm-hmm. Those are maybe the three things that I can see easily as being in conflict potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good question. I'm looking up to my the yeah, that's right. I'll yeah. just take a drink here. We'll just have a, <laughs> we're going to have a pregnant pause here. A pregnant today. pause. Yeah. I mean, funny enough, that's what was coming to mind. I think it's in, um, I think it's an Alcoholics Anonymous strategy, but, but the pause, like stopping, you know, and paying mm. attention to thinking about the things I'm thinking about to, oh, okay. And like notice, I always use the, the line. I think it was another professor that shared with me, like, Oh, my, my reaction is disproportionate to the cause here. Um, mm, act, can you say that again? My reaction is disproportionate to the cause. Um, mm. Like, yes, like we have emotions for very good reasons. Like if my hand didn't, well, this is not an emotion, I suppose, but like if my hand didn't burn when I put it on a stove, like that would be a, a problem. Like we should have reactions to things and and feelings and emotions. Um, that's part of what is beautiful about being human. But when my reaction is disproportionate to the cause, there, there may be other stories and narratives and thoughts going on there um, that are informing that. So I think like noticing that and then next level is noticing it with compassion and curiosity more than like oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that or said that, you know, like judgment. Um, but okay. Like what's that connected to? Like, why do I, why is my heart racing? Because, um, because I didn't get like exactly what I was expecting to hear in a text response or something, or why do I feel like super tired all of all of a sudden um Mm -hmm. uh, where I just had energy five minutes ago you know Mm -hmm. and uh, Mm -hmm. just I think yeah being curious and kind in that curiosity when we notice something that's disproportionate um Mm -hmm. 
and then exploring the stories and narratives there. Like I literally have count on countless occasions, like written out what Brene Brown calls the shitty first draft. Yeah. Paper. So that like, was, you read yeah. my mind. I was like, are we going to, are we going to see yeah, about totally. Brene? Like how soon will she come up? Yeah. Podcast? How soon will she come up? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. That uh, shitty first draft. I was thinking that yeah. exactly. Cause yeah. that's such a helpful, like, what's the story I'm telling myself? Mm-hmm. Acknowledge it. Right. And then. Yep. 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 See if you still then, feel that way later. <laughs> right. Right. Well, then it's like, okay, if my belief is that I'm not like my value isn't connected to like how I am like physically looking in this, like to somebody else, particularly to a man is probably if I was to get real, like my value is determined by like, if I'm like acceptable or desirable to like a man and trying to get to like me. Um, if I don't believe that that's true. Oh, okay. This is like an opportunity for me to like like in faith, like step into that belief, even though my like stories are screaming at me, um, Mm -hmm. that that isn't going to be true. Um, and that, that kind of step in faith into that belief could look like going for a walk instead of a run when that's what my body wants to do. Or maybe it looks like being really present while on a hike instead of trying to get a picture of myself in like really like a good position, you know, or maybe it looks mm-hmm. like um, choosing to like eat the whole sandwich because I'm hungry for like all of that um, instead of kind of thinking about how that's going to impact my body and therefore my worth or something like that, you Mm -hmm. know, just all those like little, Mm -hmm. little behaviors that are connected to Mm -hmm. things that either I like don't believe or don't want to believe. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, wow. Those examples are so spot on. I really appreciate your uh, vulnerability in stating those. I can identify with all those. And I think Mm -hmm. so many um, women can in particularly and both you and I can speak to the, <laughs> the female experience better than the male experience mm-hmm. but um, yeah um, it's such a journey isn't it it's such oh, a yeah. uh, <laughs> and yeah. we've also talked about you um, uh-huh do you do you mind sharing a little bit yeah. about like what so uh if we end up being just audio or if you're just listening on the podcast <laughs> I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm swirling around uh, my finger and I think Hannah knows what I'm talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. um do you mind talking about that so this, yeah. this swirling this coming round and round we've talked about this yeah growth is so much more comfortable when it's like linear and we can check it off and get a grade on it and move on you know like okay I passed algebra I don't ever need to think about it again you know versus a growth that's more of like a spiral that we kind of trace the edge of something, whatever our edge is for that thing. And it's like, particularly for like a couple of things in our life, there will probably be a lifelong journey of just kind of continually walking our edge of that thing and getting deeper in it. Um, but also, also closing it up over time, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, is a very encouraging and also (laughs) frustrating image of growth. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think particularly with the pandemic, like kind of being, well, the pandemic and lots of just like disruption to our norms, you know, that have happened in the last couple of years. It's like kind of revisiting some of those things um, because our identities are a little off kilter and are the things that give us, give me a sense of stability or a little off. So it's kind of resurfacing some of those vulnerabilities that, oh, okay. Yeah. We're walking around this again, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for, uh, yeah, taking us there. And I like how you, you brought in the edge too, because that's, mm-hmm. you know, you're bringing, bringing that into the conversation, that growth and you use the word frustration. The word that was coming to mind for me, was painful. Mm-hmm. Um, and not all the time, but like when we're on the, like growth is like painful. It's like, there's a discomfort, you know, you're like shedding a skin or I get kind of lost in analogies and can like keep finding them. But like, uh, 
there's that uh, discomfort. And again, if you can't see me, I'm kind of like writhing around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And I like, you know, I think there's a wisdom too. I think I agree in my experience of there being, it's not everything that's going to be like that, but there's definitely, I think some things that we would rather have not in our life that we'd rather Mm -hmm. not have be struggles uh, that keep coming up and again, up and up again. And I think that's such a, I'm swirling my finger again. I think that's such a helpful image. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been so helpful for me. And I think you were the one that presented that to me. And, you know, quite honestly, I think, you know, meeting you back in 2016, uh, the fall of 2016. I think that checks out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Coming up in five years or so. I think that yeah, you presented thoughts to me that hadn't been presented that spoke truth to me. And that was like when you introduced that, um, that thought of coming back round and round, you know, because of teachers you had encountered that mm-hmm. presented that to yeah, you. That, that same female pastor in college. Yeah. Oh, see, I was visualizing a male. See, mm-hmm. see what, how mm-hmm. like deeply rooted it is. <sighs> Yeah, I like I'm, I'm attributed it to this male from college um, because it was like professor and mm-hmm. my gosh, goodness gracious, um, so deep. Get those roots mm-hmm. out. But mm-hmm. that that um, that that pain that comes with that, and I, I think, and you can tell me what you if like how you feel about this, but I think there's these certain things that we want to get rid of that we can't get. And it's so painful, but there's actually like a tremendous gift in that, mm-hmm. that, so you mentioned the body of Christ and, um, I love like that imagery and thinking it's such a communal term, right. Of, uh, how we need each other and have different roles and interact together. And we don't all suffer with those same things and we can be really mm-hmm. judgmental, um, about, or let me say, I can be really judgmental mm-hmm. and. I think there are people in the world. I don't mean to say that you can be judgmental, but yeah. never, um, never. never. <laughs> uh, but we have those things. But if we think that it's being, I've got a couple of thoughts. Let's see if I can hang yeah. on to them. So the, so that linear, the pain that comes from that problem is different when we have a view of it being like a linear process versus this spiraling, getting closer, more healing to that a wound. Cause I would say it comes from like a wounding in us mm-hmm. that we're trying to grasp at other things and kind of like feel. So I think in that linear thing, when it comes back again, we think like, Oh, I've grown. And then, and then it comes back again. We're like, oh, and then we can tend to think that we are fundamentally flawed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and kind of give up mm-hmm. versus then I'm swirling my hand again versus when it's a spiral thing to me that seems really helpful for staying with it into mm-hmm. realizing that life is cyclical and there's seasons um, and that's just part mm-hmm. of life so if you know that it's part of life then it's not a failure to you but you get to choose, like, are you going to lean into that? Mm -hmm. So that, so I had that thought, that's Mm -hmm. one thought. And then the other thought is because we spend so much time in this one area, swirling my hand again, coming around, but so it's basically like big to smaller, smaller circles, like as Mm -hmm. we kind of come around it, right. That at first we're like, there's like so much dysfunction and so much havoc that it kind of wreaks in our lives and the lives we come in contact with. And then it becomes, it still has an impact, but it's less and less. And maybe not everybody can observe it from a mile away. And then maybe it's just our friends. And then maybe it's just like closer friends and family. And then maybe it's just our partner. Um, Mm -hmm. I haven't really articulated that before. I don't know if that's true, but, but that we get better at it, but there's, we get a wisdom because of that. And then we have an empathy for other people Mm -hmm. uh, that Mm -hmm. struggle with that same thing. And then we can, I think, encourage one another Mm -hmm. uh, in that. So I don't know. Yeah. I I mean, it allows us to receive that courage from one another, because if there's, if there's that expectation of linear growth in these areas, yeah, there's that shame or that like failure or extra layer of frustration and that giving up and kind of a hardness in us that like or in me like I'm struggling with that again or like and then it 
it keeps me from like receiving those gifts from other people or like it keeps me from being vulnerable, I guess. And mm-hmm. to be vulnerable isn't a place where I can give and receive and yeah. Um, yeah. Or like, I'm even just mm-hmm. thinking in my line of work, like conversations and like working with people who, um, like are hard hearted to their wounds or, um, yeah, there's just like so much Mm -hmm. more Mm -hmm. that can be done (laughs) when we're, Mm -hmm. when we're in that compassionate place with ourselves and each Mm other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So agreed. And, uh, when we talk about vulnerability, you know, I, I think is very true. And I would describe myself as like a Brene evangelist, right. That she talks (laughs) about, um, and in her research showing that her social science research that vulnerability is key to human connection, right? And mm-hmm. when we stop being vulnerable, we stop connecting, but we all have that fundamental need, human need. That's like our most basic fundamental need is like to be known and loved and to have that human connection. And so mm-hmm. um, I think it's, yeah, I think you're just like sp- spot on there. Um, I, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just enjoying this so much. So good. Um, me too. Me too. <laughs> um, and I love it because your eyes keep going up left. So I know I, have it. So I know, I know that I'm hitting the mark. We're having like, a, or we are hitting the mark together. We're yeah. having a good conversation. Yeah. Um, so thanks for sharing all those things. What, uh, I think you've kind of gone there already, but, uh, so one of the questions that I'll try to ask most of my guests is what is something that you're I feel comfortable sharing about what you're currently uh, learning about living your healthiest life. You've brought up the pandemic a couple of times, you know, I don't, you might just reiterate, reiterate something you've already stated or yeah. Like what, uh, what is something, yeah. That you're, you're currently, as you, as you think about that edge and that growth and, you know, it can be, yeah, just it could be anything or like even a sphere that like we haven't, we haven't talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm, that's a good question. I was on Instagram today and saw someone post something that someone else said, you know, how that all happens of like, you know, when you look at a tree, uh, it has all these different seasons of growth and there's like the winter really hardy growth where like the ring of the tree is a lot more dense growth Mm. and less but like it's still growing um Mm. versus like in spring it gets a little bit more like the rings of the tree are a little bit spongier and bigger because it's growing a little bit more vibrantly and and visibly um and I think that connected with me a little bit like and even just so my nerves for this conversation were like, I don't know if I'm living my health, healthiest life yeah. right now. Um, mm-hmm. But I think kind of what I'm learning about living my healthiest life in this season that feels like a little bit more wintry to me um, is like, like a little bit matters. And mm-hmm. the like the don't give up thing of, Oh, I can't achieve that vision of like healthiest life, right? That's like, just like vibrant all the time or like just always just super present and connected Mm, and like, mm -hmm. just like living, Mm. like just like super generous all the time and like managing my energy perfectly and like, you know, Mm -hmm. all Mm -hmm. whatever my ideals are for that. And yes, it's like, yeah. if I like all or nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think right now I'm learning that, like, it's not helpful to have an all or nothing mindset around living my healthiest life, mm-hmm. but like, mm-hmm. like my housemate and I will, I'll just say, Sari, you know, Sari, but, um, mm-hmm. she's great by the yeah. way to everybody. Hi, Sari. <laughs> Um, Where, will you be our one other <laughs> will you listen <laughs> are you the one yeah you get a shout out 
yeah that's right um, uh, one out one hour in you know yeah <laughs> we were <laughs> driving <forward. laughs> anyway sorry yeah we were driving home from camping a couple weekends ago and and we've gotten into some like unhealthy or yeah to categorize it not typically our healthy behaviors um, into patterns during the pandemic and um and like when we would try and just do like a full overhaul to like our home rhythms it just didn't like it was that all or nothing like we just couldn't sustain it like I didn't have the energy to like hit it down at the park in every area and so like on the drive home from camping we were like okay what feels like really what would just set us up for success like we would just give us some good wins and like our bodies would thank us our like our hearts and our minds would thank us you know and one of them was just like drinking 64 ounces of water a day like mm-hmm. we didn't even start to address like drinking less wine at night like we just started like just <laughs> drink feel better, more water yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. let's just start yeah. there like start yeah. with the yeses and yeah um and like let's just do like 15 minutes of yoga in the morning you know like yeah. that'll feel really good and so I think that like yeah to like give myself the grace or to receive the grace that's there for me to like not knock it out of the park like every day all the time but like I'm still on the team if I'm on the bench but like show up (laughs) Uh, drink water yes like I think I shared earlier in the episode like the joyful movement has kind of like helped Mm -hmm. keep my body like like I don't want to move a lot right now and so but like yeah, when, yeah. I, when I phrase it as like joyful movement like okay like what could that look like today you know so. that's right you got you got rollerblades this yeah summer, got right? some rollerblades mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. um Oh my gosh. I I don't know if your eyes were up left too much, but I was like <laughs> grinning. Oh, uh, it's like, it's kind of like silly that whole time. And sometimes we're mm. chatting on the phone and I like, I tell you how much I'm doing, mm-hmm. but, um, I'm just so glad there was like, uh, a number of points there that I'm just like, yeah. And I'm so glad came up on this, you know, first episode with a, with a guest. Like, I think this is, um, like what, like this whole idea of like, what it means to be healthy and Mm -hmm. that you need to be like on all the time or Mm -hmm. it's this performance or it's Mm -hmm. this um yeah and you're you're so good with uh imagery and so I um I'm also super excited because I think you know that I love trees and I that's right yeah uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've you know uh how much to even share about this but like I like love trees and I just love being around them. But part of my belief was that it was almost a little bit pagan, like how much I liked Mm -hmm. them and like Mm -hmm. wanted to be around them. And I've had this project, you know, I do photography and I've had this project wanting to create a photo book. And so once I, so I I feel this freedom soon and like with growth that I've done that, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm totally going to do that book. And it's Mm -hmm. like, part of that book is like all the different things that teach not all the things that occur to me that yes teach us. <laughs> yeah, yes <laughs> I'm not every single thing. yeah it's yeah. gonna be like yeah it's gonna be a gonna big want, coffee table like, <laughs> you're gonna want it you're gonna want it let's just say that Good. uh yeah you can pre-order on right no <laughs> 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 the kickstarter will be coming out on november 1st no um I didn't know about that about the rings and I was I mean just you like, might want to fact check it it's very poetic yeah. I think it's real but it may be well, it makes check. a lot of sense from a scientific perspective mm-hmm. of uh like based on nutrients like less light you know mm-hmm. if uh, things yeah um I'll fact check it at some right. point when the energies and the, yeah. the when there's an alignment and a convergence to mm-hmm. uh, my interest and my capacity <laughs> um yeah and there was something else that you said that I also think that we think about about living your best life and I'm in the moment can't remember it but I'm so glad mm-hmm. that uh, you, you brought it up. Um, mm-hmm. and it just making me grin because I'm like, yeah. So, um, to, <laughs> yeah. because yeah, cause everybody listening is, is benefiting from, mm-hmm. from it. So, so thank you so much. And I am, and just me having this conversation with you is, uh, 
I'm I'm loving it. So, um, so thank you. And the yeah. fact that we get to, you know, you in Portland, me here, that we get to see each other's face and do this over Zoom and have the tech. So last question. Yeah. Um, I, I've loved where this conversation has taken us. Uh, last question is, what do you wish? So and you've done and you've taken it to a personal place. And I really um, appreciate that because you could have stayed more like theoretical and, you know, other people. Um, but I want to make sure we cover that. Like, what do you think is something that you like based on your experience, like your worldview? What is something that you wish more people knew about living their healthiest life? Mm-hmm. I had you sent me the questions before and so I I had kind of thought about that but what I had thought about doesn't feel doesn't it's not as it's not ringing as true as it did earlier but Mm -hmm. what I was thinking of earlier is Anne Lamott has this quote of like I forget exactly the context, but basically she's saying like the life you're looking for is like, it's an inside job. Like the, Mm. the, it's not about um, the indicators that society would put on what a healthy life looks like. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, those can be true indicators, but they also can be not true depending on mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the definition of health you're working with, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, maybe, maybe that kind of helps get me going in a direction here of like, mm-hmm. like I wish we all, I won't just say people, but like myself included, like continue to have like the courage freedom permission to like explore what like healthiest life looks like for them in this season um because that might look different than for somebody else um because the comparison game is probably not going to lead us to our healthiest life but Mm -hmm. um yeah we can learn from each other and we can you know, sometimes you'll be doing something or like a, there was a while there where we were, um, you're doing, uh, like a different kind of workout for five minutes a day, a month, um, a couple of years ago. And I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, that, that sounds fun. It was mm-hmm. great. It worked great for me too. And there can be times where that syncs up, but, um, but yeah, to like kind of do the work to explore and to dream and to like freely imagine what, like, what is, like your healthiest life look like right now Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what's like a next step, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many great points there of, um, I mean, you've, it's kind of woven throughout what you've said here, uh, in our conversation about kind of listening to your inner voice and kind of trusting that your inner, uh, wisdom and, kind of addressing that that might not be very loud, I guess, or you haven't said it in that way, but that's that that mm-hmm. might be um, not, it might not be at the forefront of mm-hmm. our, of our mind. And so, you know, that word discernment makes me uh, think about that. And you talk about comparison and then you drop two things in there right away. And I didn't know if you're going to go more comparison or seasons. Cause that, that mm. was like, so, so rich of like, comparing ourselves to others and how that is like a faulty foundation to build Mm -hmm. whatever our plan is on because if we're all unique we again like body of christ kind of imagery Mm -hmm. or different parts of different we'll say just different parts of the body and like in a Mm -hmm. community kind of image that we need to not yeah try to be the eye you know if Mm -hmm. we're like the index finger you know we should be the um you know, for the index finger, we don't need to try to be the heart, you know, like Mm -hmm. just be kind of good at what we're at or just be our authentic self. And then the season, you know, I came back Mm -hmm. around to that of dropped that in there of, cause maybe, and I can relate to that of like where Mm -hmm. I was, you know, if we just take like 
the physical domain, like my, my capacity for what I could do uh, physically, like versus now when I was at your house, like we sat beside a lake, like we drove to a lake, sat beside the lake and I did a little paddling on it. And then I had like a headache and had to go to bed at seven because of everything. Cause I had to travel to your house and the work mm-hmm. and that's, that's just flying. And that's like mm-hmm. stuff that would have been no big deal before. Oh, and like yeah. the most chill told my body told me like, this is a lot you're dealing mm-hmm. with a lot. Right. And so we kind of learn and kind of refine that. So, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Bringing it back to the garden. I mean, there's like the, the body imagery and then there's also like, I I don't even have a number of how many different kinds of plant species there are, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and aloe vera is going to need very different things to grow than an evergreen, you know, like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. aloe vera's healthiest life is probably going to look different than the the Doug fir. So yeah, Yeah. just that like freedom and permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's such a good point. That's that the times that that does pop into my head or occur to me of like flowers, for example, I'll think Mm -hmm. of those and just like, they're just being themselves and Mm -hmm. look at them. Like we can like stop and just enjoy them. You know, I've got some, uh, for those who are watching on video, you know, there's just some like, got some, yeah, I've got some flowers right there of like, thank you. I can't identify them. I'm like, they're flowers. They're (laughs) (laughs) mums. Um, Yeah, like I thank you for that imagery. I'm I'm gonna just mess it up by talking about it out loud, but I, I think that's um, it's really helpful for me anyway. So, Hansi, it's been a pleasure to chat with you and have you here. And fun. I just want this is good, <laughs> more fun than I thought. You know, or, I, mean, I, I just didn't know. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna say. But oh, thank man. you for your good questions. Yeah. And such oh. a, reflective listener so I I it kind of helps draw me out so thanks for that oh well thank you and you look uh beautiful as always uh, so very nice to see your face and the smiling and uh I can't wait to hear this and um to listen to it and post and then just to hear I know it's gonna um be a, a blessing to people that uh, listen to it and that's actually uh kind of the outro here is just uh a blessing for people that uh, may you see the blessing so i think it, part of uh, living our healthiest life is that you actually see the things mm-hmm. around you to be grateful for so i'm super grateful mm-hmm. for you and to all the listeners out there uh, may you see the blessing thanks so Thanks for listening to this episode of the Lyle podcast. If you liked what you heard, you can find me on Instagram at the Elba Trail, as well as YouTube, the internet, www.thealbatrell.com. And that's about it. And back here for our next episode of the podcast, subscribe and leave a nice review if you think it'll be helpful for other people. Only then. Thanks. May you see the blessing.